talked with Dr. David Niklaus uh, of Stanford and his lab, of course, there. It's a pioneering human translational research group. And he has said that immunotherapy is revolutionizing cancer treatment. So let's stay with that same topic. We're here at ASH to talk about a featured topic, novel approaches to immunotherapy, not just Checkpoint. So to do this, I'm with Dr. Crystal McCall, who is an MD, a professor of pediatrics in the hematology and oncology division at Stanford University School of Medicine. Now, you're going beyond Checkpoint, but before we go there, it probably is wise to take a moment just to talk about immune Checkpoint inhibitors. Sure. Of course, that's the topic everybody wants to talk about <laughs> because it really is the fundamental uh, discovery that is revolutionizing right. immunotherapy. Um, and that's the good news, and we all know that it's transforming the way we approach melanoma and uh, now lymphoma, and uh, you know, uh, we're seeing it in lung cancer and head and neck cancer. I mean, the list is going on and on. Um, but still, the truth is, most patients treated with a checkpoint inhibitor don't respond, and many of those who do respond don't have uh, durable responses, and so we need to make these inhibitors better. Uh, we also have to make them more safe. Um, but the area that we saw a lot of work in here at ASH is now beginning to looking at combinations with checkpoint inhibitors. Oh, okay. So is that what's new right now? I think that that in the field of drug development in oncology today, uh, there is a general consensus that the most common study being undertaken is checkpoint plus A, checkpoint plus B, checkpoint plus C. And we saw uh, a lot of that uh, at ASH here, and we'll be discussing some of that in our session, some of the combination studies. What seems to be working in terms of which patients, how do you determine which patient might respond best to which agent? Is there any of that yet? Yeah, uh, I think we are now beginning to learn more about which patients are likely to respond to checkpoint as a single agent. We know that if you have a tumor that's already got T cells infiltrated, you're more likely to respond. The million dollar question is how do you convert a patient whose tumor is cold? Right where it looks as if the immune system is ignoring the tumor, how do you convert them to checkpoint responsive? And you're doing that by trying to use combinations. And I don't think we have a lot of understanding about which combination is likely to be most beneficial and which patients are able to be converted from that cold tumor to a hot tumor. That's still very new work. Is there research underway to try to figure that out? Much research underway. <laughs> That's where a lot of the action is, is in the cold tumors now, trying to figure out how do we convert them to become a checkpoint response. How do you wake it up? How do you get the body to acknowledge it's there and say, oh? Exactly. It's exactly what we're looking for. And it's a different class of agents than checkpoint inhibitors. It's agents that are turning on the innate immune system in the tumor. It's dendritic cell activating agents. Um, in the next few years, and I'm talking maybe two to four years, how is this going to affect clinically the patients that get seen with a variety of these different diseases? Well, for adult cancer medicine, uh, as I mentioned, checkpoints are revolutionary. Um, and I imagine that uh, there will be very few histologies where you don't use checkpoint inhibitors for some uh, component of the therapy. Uh, I'm a pediatric oncologist. Right, that was my next question. And in fact, I wish I could say the same in pediatric oncology, but so far the data has not been as encouraging. What's the difference? checkpoint inhibitors. Um, you know, firstly, I think we should all remain humble here. We don't know as much as we think we know, but that doesn't stop us from yes, coming exactly. up with ideas. Uh, our hypothesis is that the childhood tumors are genetically uh, less mutated. Uh, they are in some ways um, uh, less complex in that you often might have one or two mutations that give rise to the tumor, and they, they develop over the short term. Uh, a, a bad cell gone awry at the wrong time, you get cancer. It's a little different than adult cancers, which often develop over the course of many years from chronic uh, insults. And so these pediatric tumors have less mutations, they have less abnormalities for the immune system to recognize, and for that reason we are concerned that using checkpoint inhibitors um, that may be why the checkpoint inhibitors are not as potent against childhood cancers. Is this a fun area to be researching in right now? 
I would say it's a fun area to be researching in right now. It, it's fun because everyone is excited about it. Yes. You know, you don't have to convince people that it's important, <laughs> right. which uh, really allows you to spend time actually doing the work. Um, so yes, it's a really exciting. And what are you doing specifically? Yeah. So my area of focus is on cellular therapy. And I do this because, as I said, I'm a pediatric oncologist. And uh, what we've seen, I've been leading the checkpoint trials in, in pediatric oncology and have not been impressed with the activity. On the other hand, using cell-based therapeutics has had dramatic effects in the most common childhood cancer, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And so uh, I believe that using engineered T cells may be a way to harness the power of the immune system for patients whose tumors do not have the high mutation burden like a melanoma. And that's what I work on. Well, this is certainly an area to watch. And I thank you very much for having some time for us here at ASH 2016, where we also have a variety of coverage, both online and in print. And for ASH Clinical News, I'm Rick McGuire.